The empire long divided must unite, long united must divide. Welcome back to CK3 After the End, I'm Walker and here we are with Los Estados Desunidos. So this is going to be a campaign where we're going to start with Oswaldo of Nayarit, a hexagonal right character. We are going to come back to South America, but unfortunately I had to move some stuff around inside my hard drive and the mod broke and then I was like, alright, you know, if I have to reinstall it, we might as well install the, the new open beta because the new open beta runs on 1.9 so we get access to like all the cool 1.9 stuff including power sharing and whatnot and I feel like that would be really really fun to play with inside of Brazil and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here in this this divided empire and see what we can do to bring it back together but then after the death of Oswaldo you know as we do here in CK3 after the end we'll probably move down to Central America maybe we'll move to Venezuela but the ultimate goal I think is gonna be to move into Brazil and see what we can make happen down there but the the area here in Mexico or in, in Mexico is is really anarchic there's a lot of crazy stuff going on and I feel like one of the great ways to learn about the lore of course in CK3 after the end is to just play in different areas so that's what we're gonna be doing we're gonna start it off with Oswaldo of, of Nayarit this this duke who worships luchadors who went down to Ciudad de Mexico to throw out some corrupt rulers down there and see what we can do to follow in those historical footsteps but we've got a really interesting role-playing potential here as well lustful seducer brave ambitious this character is meant to conquer both the the literal conquer of the states around him as well as conquering hearts because ooh. Over here in, in Veracruz, there's a Peleo y Logos character, Wenceslao III. This is, of course, a, a reference to the Peleo Logos dynasty, the last dynasty of Byzantium. And there are a couple of characters here that I think our character Oswaldo is probably going to want to form a relationship with. But of course, this is going to be a, a war both of hearts as well as of swords, because boy, We've got some pretty powerful enemies right next door. But Oswaldo is going to have to do a lot of stuff simultaneously. You know, we're not just going to be doing some romance schemes or seduction schemes, although we are certainly going to be doing some of that. But we have a big war chest. We have a lot of enemies near us, like Colima, who are just not strong enough to resist us. So we'll go ahead and, and take advantage of the fact that we start with a pretty reasonable chunk of gold, expand our men-at-arms, and of course, because we're playing on 1.9, now we have to station our men-at-arms in particular areas. That means that we can't do like the infinite men-at-arms stacking and just have really, really, really powerful stuff. But it also means that you can specialize your men-at-arms a little better. And of course, because the title for the, the Estados Unidos of Mexico, the, the empire still exists, at least for now, we can cast a vote for ourselves. It's a feudal elective title. So if, if Wenceslao III just somehow dies super early, we can find ourselves in a, a really reasonable position. We're also going to move into martial focus, pick up chivalry. We'll probably pick up stalwart leader, but then we'll do a lot of stuff in strategist. Stalwart leader is really helpful just so you don't die because, uh, you know, Oswaldo, he's 28. He's robust. He's got plenty of conquest ahead of him. But if he dies in battle, that could that could be pretty annoying. And we're going to do a search for physician. But we're also going to take advantage of the fact that hexagonal right can arrange same-sex marriages. So we're going to go ahead and find a couple of just really high prowess characters. Yep, there's Martine. We'll bring a, another champion into our court. Bring yet another champion into our court. Because we just want to position ourselves to rumble. Because that is, that is what this is all going to be about. Just getting as much strength as we can as quickly as possible. We'll celebrate Day of the Dead and, and whatnot once we get a little more cash, but boy, cash is gonna be like the biggest problem for poor Oswaldo. He's gonna be pushing his, his troops to the limit pretty much all of the time. And we're also gonna go ahead and just make a, a nice little arranged marriage for our daughter. I think getting an alliance with the uh, Republic of Hidalgo is gonna be really strong. But you can see here that there's gonna be some issues down in, in Ciudad de Mexico. A Republic has taken over the capital, thrown the emperor out to Veracruz. There's a lot of lore that I'd love to discuss, uh, and we will be doing lore videos on these areas, you know, in due time. But I, I, again, I feel like one of the best ways to just engage with the lore is just engage with the game. We'll probably find an arranged marriage for our son as well. More alliance power is usually a useful thing to have. 
And on the note of gold, we're going to have our, our wife just switch over to fill coffers. We just need as much money as we can get our hands on. We'll start converting a faith out here. Uh, do a little bit of extra gold collection. And then, of course, as we conquer things, we're going to need to increase county control. But we're going to start it off by just taking Kalima as soon as our, our men-at-arms replenish just a little bit. Because I think taking this territory here going to be really helpful in this struggle. So they've ported the Iberian struggle from vanilla CK3 over to, to this area, to Mexico, because I think it, it is one of those nice, flavorful, lots of diverse people fighting each other. Should be, should be pretty fun. But of course, this is going to be really draining on our prestige. The more wars we fight, especially offensive wars with allies, the more prestige is going to get thrown away. Herodes, the uh, brother here, is actually volunteering to help us seduce his sister. I mean, I guess that's cool, but, you know, it's a, a weird brother thing to do. Guadalajara wants to pay us 50 gold for a truce. You know, I'm okay doing that. I think a 10-year truce is a little annoying because I'd, I'd like to attack Guadalajara if we get the opportunity to, but this truce goes two ways, and that means that if we get a, a truce with them, we can focus on fighting these guys instead and then fight them hopefully once the truce is up. And you know, I'm, I'm never gonna say no to, to more gold, but we're gonna attack Kolima and we're gonna go straight for their capital. Reason being that if we can take their capital in a future war, one war, we can do a struggle conflict against them and take all of our borders, which will be the remainder of the, the territory that they control. Ooh, looks like Kolima has done us the favor of marching their troops over to our territory, great. And because our character is an organizer, we should have a pretty easy time just hunting them down. Won the first battle against Kolima. And as many of these fights as we can command ourselves, the better. Because every fight where you're in command, you're not going to be getting raw prestige, but you'll be getting the, the payoff here, level of fame. And that's kind of all we really need. Because if we can get to level 4, we can start doing full-on invasions. All right, so we did successfully seduce Maria Teresa. I think what we're gonna do is just pin her and then go ahead and seduce her sister in turn. I think Oswaldo is pretty obviously a, a force for anarchy here within the borders of the empire, as well as the beds of the empire. But you can see there, there are some really interesting characters inside this, this territory, right? There's a, a nice big beefy character there, 25 marshal here in Michoacan. Very, very strong. Oh, speaking of very strong, sick. We got a, a Viking just joining our court. Yeah, no problem. Excellent. We've seized control of Kolima itself, so now we just need to clear out what remains of their army, and we should have a pretty easy march forward from here. We'll see who our next target should be, but I, I like moving into San Luis Potosi. The ruler is very weak, and imbecile is usually pretty easy to push around. We won the we won the war just like that. Awesome. Oh my god, we're actually going to be defending in a war as an immediate follow up because it looks like somebody attacked Kolima in, in that same time frame. But that's really good because that means that now we're a defender in this uh this war, and if we can enforce our demand, we get 173 gold. Fantastic, fantastic. And because we're on the defensive, we can actually call our new ally in Hidalgo into the war on our side because if we can get enough gold then we can actually afford to do some of the the fun little decisions that have been introduced here like celebrating day of the dead that'd be really cool oh the fools they're jumping in on this fight and we've managed to seduce the other member of the paleologos dynasty well all right <laughs> this is gonna be a an interesting succession no matter what but i i like i like adding some really weird stuff because it gives us opportunities for destabilization because I, I do like moving around in CK3. I think that you can definitely go off the deep end and just breed super characters every single time, but I like the role-playing aspect and uh, we're definitely role-playing as somebody here. Man, somebody's raiding us at the same time? Oh Jesus, 27 Marshall. All right, well, have fun burning down some peasants. Mm, we're probably not going to drive that dude off. Huh. Guadalajara is volunteering to help us out in this defensive war, but I don't want to pay money to them in the event that they somehow contribute enough to this war that we would have to. So we we won't bring them in this time, but I like being part of the struggle because it gives you lots of opportunities for, for fighting and 
spending gold productively. All right, so we've started the fight and our allies have jumped in. That's, that's kind of all we were looking for. Oh yeah, look at that. Crushed that little alliance. Even captured a mayor for our troubles. Excellent. Oh no, our allies are being isolated out here. Can we save them in time? Yep, looks like we sure can. Oh, he was captured by somebody else. Well, that's all right. We'll get 117 gold, that's good enough for me. And now thanks to that negotiated truce with Heraclio, we have an opportunity. We can go ahead and move into San Luis Potosi if we so desire. If we can take Loreto, Loreto will give us a border with Zacatecas from the north, but it'll also give us a massive border with Jalisco. And if we can take that massive border, turn it into a, a struggle conflict, take three territories, I think we'll appreciate it. So yeah, let's let our levies replenish just a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and attack San Luis Potosi for Loreto. But we're also going to start a uh, seduction campaign against the wife of Eron of Costa Grande. 20 Marshall means he's a little scary, but six prowess isn't that, that terrifying. And importantly, Autoturista is one of these things that we historically, at least in the, in the lore, are positioned against, right? The hexagonal right characters ousted the Autoturistas to return to the six corners of the faith. And that's, uh, that's gonna be something we're doing here. Ousting all of these guys down in Ciudad de Mexico and in, in Veracruz. <gasps> Speaking of in Veracruz, it looks like the empire has indeed collapsed. All right, well, does that give us an opportunity to invite either of these? Nope, they're both now married. Well, if, if these spouses die, then we might go ahead and, and invite them and turn them into our concubines, but uh, not at the moment. You know what, San Luis Potosi doesn't have any allies and their ruler is not particularly competent. So we're gonna go ahead and declare a county war for Laredo. If they summon up mercenaries, then we'll call in our allies. But if they don't, I feel pretty confident in our ability to beat them one-on-one, -on -one, see how it goes. Felipe, are you gonna hire some mercs? Are you gonna merc up? Doesn't look like it, at least not so far. And man, we are just thrashing their troops. That's uh, that's men at arms, I guess. We've had another son. Excellent. I, I like having another son to stick here in Zacatecas. There's a, a lot of territory that we're gonna need to rule and having more kids, that could be a, an easy way to, to get that done. Ooh, all right, so we did successfully seduce Cecilia, so we'll we'll see how many illegitimate children Oswaldo can leave in his wake. I think one of the, the fun things we can do is just try to destabilize the realms that we build as we build them, sow the seeds for their own destruction. Oh yeah, all right, we are just messing San Luis Potosi up. We're not taking their capital, so they won't like collapse in, in one war, but if we can weaken them, yeah, it looks like some other people might jump in on this fight. And that's uh, that's kind of all we need. We just need as much weakness around us as we can afford to, to pick up. That, that was a really early collapse for what remained of the, the empire of, of Mexico here, but one that's going to help us out a lot. And now we can pick up total war, which means our prestige. It's going to be leveraged that much better in these wars. And of course, as soon as we can get into dust up, that's also going to reduce the cost of these fights. Oh man. All right. So we won the siege, but we also captured a, an heir that we can ransom for a hundred gold. So let's, uh, let's ransom that, that young lady first, and then we'll go ahead and end this war. Cause now we have so much gold that I actually feel pretty good doing some, some fun, flavorful stuff. So yeah, let's grant Loreto to our, our son Oswaldo. And then let's go in here and celebrate the day of the dead. Yeah, let's grab, uh, let's grab 50 Renown. I think that's a, a fun little start for us. And with the remainder of this money, yeah, let's uh, get another stack of armored footmen. Let our levies replenish just a little bit. Oh man, Jalisco has managed to find not one, but two allies in the time that, that it took us to take that territory from San Luis Potosi. So maybe we'll go for Zacatecas first. This looks incredibly, incredibly weak. And of course, because of our truce with Guadalajara, as well as the fact that they would just thrash us if we fought one-on-one -on -one, 10 champions, I think Zacatecas looks like a, a fun option for us to expand into. Yeah, let's go ahead and declare war. But in order for us to make real progress with Oswaldo, we are gonna have to become a king. 
Now, the most obvious king for us to become would be the Kingdom of Jalisco, but in order to become the, the King of Jalisco, we are going to have to defeat Guadalajara. So as a second backup, we could go into Gran Chichimeca. There's a lot of territory that we're going to be able to take from Zacatecas in the next war. Same with San Luis Potosí. So just two wars might be all we need to become a king. Two wars and a lot of gold. All right, Zacatecas has had a coup, and now they have a different ruler, and the different ruler has mercenaries. All right, ooh, all right, so we can murder Jorge Gabsol, the uh, husband of Alejandra here. If we murder him, then she's already in our court now because of the collapse of that empire. And then we could turn her into a, a legal concubine. Wow, we are, we are gonna have just a lot of illegitimate kids that we can recognize on our, death be our deathbed. These are the sort of historical characters that I like to play, because, you know, Oswaldo, he's doing these conquests, but is he doing them for religious reasons? Is he doing them for personal reasons? Is he doing them simply because, you know, he's trained as a fighter? I imagine that there's a lot of debate by, by future scholars, you know, in 3000 AD or whatever as to why Oswaldo began these conquests, but the, the real truth of it is that we'll never know, right? Maybe, maybe he was just doing it for fun. An attempt on my life. Well, that makes sense. I imagine that, that Oswaldo has made quite a few enemies over the years, but we've got a loyal 20 intrigue spy master that should keep us alive for a while. Oh yeah. All right, so we just demolished the uh, troops here of Zacatecas. That's great, because they, they did have a coup that should have made them a little stronger, but we've taken advantage of their instability and executed a, a war here. And now we can just give all that to our second son. The more territory we can give him, the better, because that means that all of the extra territory that we'd like to hold on to can go to Arjejo here. And enough time has passed that we can actually go ahead and declare war on Colima. But we're pretty close to the dust-up phase, and so that'll save us just an enormous amount of prestige if we wait until then. But one thing that we don't need to wait for is, I guess, killing Jorge here. <laughs> no one can trace the poison back to me. So now we can make our wife, or we can make our lover our, our concubine. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. I think we're going to go ahead and declare war on Wenceslao the, the Lesser of Morelos. If we can take this territory, that'll of course get us really close to Ciudad de Mexico. And if we can take control of this central area, because it is our faith's uh, holy sites like all right around here, that'll be really good for us. We do need to take Guadalajara still, but the more territory we can get, the less these troops are going to scare us. Heracleo is not a joke. Light footmen, pikemen, armored footmen, but if we can just get a massive wave of levies behind them and a couple of strong allies, we should be able to, to push Guadalajara down enough that we can become the head of our culture. At the moment, we only have four counties in our realm that are the right culture, so we're not particularly close to, to taking that slot. Not just yet. Ooh, all right, Guadalajara is getting messed up. They're getting attacked by Michoacan, that, that powerful force over there. And that's gonna be nice, because if these guys succeed in their raid, they're not actually taking any territory, they're just hurting Guadalajara. And our truce is only active for another three years, so we might have the opportunity to push Guadalajara around. Yep, the, the little allies keep trying to push us out. They're trying to deny us access to Morelos which would be nice, but oof, if, we can just, if we can just take that little spot there, then we'll be in a great location to continue our expansion. If, if Guerrero, for instance, collapses, I'd love to be able to capitalize on it, and being bordered on there is a great way to get it. Oh yes, all right, so we captured our, our foe in the, the final siege. We'll still ransom him, because we, boy, do we need gold, but that is exactly what we're looking for. Now, I don't like the fact that Bahasur keeps coming down here to raid us, but unfortunately there's not a lot we can do about it. Our troops are, are needed elsewhere. Oh no, we've been exposed as an adulterer. I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. We were already a fornicator, we might as well also get adulterer along the way. But I think we are going to divide Oswaldo's reign up into, into two parts. I think what we're going to do, of course, is just wait until we become a king somewhere, and then we'll see what King Oswaldo is able to do once he's got that, that kingly title. Dust-up phase is almost here. 
I'm so excited because with dust up in place, then a lot of these wars that we've been doing are going to become a lot cheaper. We should be able to expand a lot faster without spending nearly as much prestige. That'll let us pull our allies into more offensive wars. And then from there, we'll see if we can take down somebody like Mishwakan or Guadalajara. More, more likely Guadalajara, simply because they're, they're in the same kingdom that we want. Yes, we've transitioned to dust up. All right, peasants are trying to take advantage of the fact that, you know, we're out here fighting wars all the time to, to rise up, but I think we should be all right. We, we have 2,000 troops, and peasant rebellions are generally not very dangerous, at least until they can take control of a castle. And considering that we have siege weapons and they don't, that should be an easy problem for us to get around. Oh, yeah. All right, so we captured Miguel, the, uh, the heir over here in, in Colima. I think we're just going to ransom him, and then we'll go ahead and win this war anyway, because we have sieged down their capital. And indeed, we have seized control of all of their territory. Miguel, though, is 20 martial, 25 prowess. That is a really, really beefy character. So I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to give Colima back to Miguel in an effort to improve his opinion of us. Because what I'd like to do is convert him. That might require us to do a little bit of swaying first, but I'm not above doing that. Defeated those little peasant uprising. Boy, things are just going really well for Oswaldo, except for, uh, well, he's got seven kids. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a little dangerous because our, our succession is going to be split. We have 10 more months in our truce with Heraclio. Ooh, and Hidalgo is having a peasant revolt. I guess we'll go ahead and help him out. I, <laughs> all right, well, I guess you didn't really need the help after all. But now we have 458 presti or 452 prestige. That means that if we declare a struggle here for 122, we'll be able to slice off big chunks of Guadalajara. And of course, we have allies, so we can spend a lot of prestige on this, this first war. It's going to be costly, and I wish we had the ability to spend the, the prestige elsewhere, maybe do a, a war against Zacatecas. But if we can do this war against Guadalajara, that's kind of all we need in order to become king of Jalisco. We only need one more of the de Jure counties. And uh, I don't think we're going to be able to take it from Michoacan. This is, this is a scary, scary character over here. And of course, by creating titles, like another ducal title here in Costa Alegre, we're able to grab a whole lot of prestige. So like I said, this character, Oswaldo, really like a lot of the other warmongers that we play. All he needs is money. All he needs is money. Oh, here's an opportunity to get a lot, but... I'd rather get a martial perk if we can get it. Oh yes, we've become the master of the war horse. And you know what? We'll take a Blueskin as our name. I think that's a kind of cool reference because there's the Blue Demon, who's one of the, the historical characters here that the Hexagonal Rite worships. But Guadalajara, your time is up, I think. You've got a, a, nice, a nice alliance there. It does look scary, but... This struggle is only going to cost us 122 prestige, and then we can turn around and immediately call both of our allies in, which is going to be nice, because it all goes down to 429. What happened to your army, friend? You used to have so much. Ah, I see what happened. The inheritance was split, and that's kind of all you really need to, to have an empire go from a, a useful ally to a fool. But Cortez, they've got 2,000 troops, or something akin to 2,000 troops? Where did they see 2,000 troops? Oh, that's where he saw 2,000 troops. Guadalajara is out in force, everybody. So let's see what we can do. We got 35, so we got a, we got a really, really, really good commander here in Miguel. That's going to help us, I hope. <laughs> oh no, it looks like some other folks are, are coming out of the woodwork to potentially intervene in this fight. Don't, don't help Guadalajara. You guys don't need that. You don't need that negativity in your life. Just because I considered seducing your wife for a little while doesn't mean you have to intervene in this war. All right, come on, come on. 35, Marshal, you can do this. Oh, we've gained possessed. Oh yes, that is, that is fun. That is fun. Oh, we can take a dynasty legacy. I, I like it. 
So there are some new Dynasty legacies here due to the way that the game is set up in, in CK3 after the end, but I think Oswaldo and his focus on fighting, he's just going to go ahead and take House of Warriors. We'll see what, what happens to his Dynasty after his death, but it is going to be built on Conquest, at least initially. Miguel is getting really, really friendly. At this point, he might actually accept a, a request for him to convert. Yes, he's de decided to convert to hexagonal, right? Perfect. 25 prowess. This dude is going to be an absolute unit. And you know what? We'll, we'll defend him publicly because he was willing to convert to our, our religion without demanding any bribes. Guadalajara is trying to siege this down. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can scare off Guadalajara before they finish the siege. It doesn't look like it. It's going to be annoying, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Oh, hell yeah, we got a 19 prowess champion. Are we going to get there right? Oh, like one turn, one tick after we would have needed to, to prevent the siege from failing. Yes. All right, so we've won this war, seized control of a big chunk of Guadalajara. And now all we need in order to become the king of Jalisco is just gold. That's 175 gold. That's all we need. And we're the new head of the, the Tapatio culture. So that means we can actually focus on special forces. I think special forces is kind of all we need. Ooh, and our son has become an intricate web weaver. Excellent. I love the new mechanics for, for these events. I think they're really fun and add a lot of flavor. Although, boy, success chance. Come on, guys. Eventually, we'll get better at hunting once we uh, stop spending all our gold on troops and stuff. Ooh, speaking of troops and stuff, there's there's Duke Ramon back at the apple one more time. If we can if we can defeat him, though, we can take all the loot that he's picked up. That would be pretty nice. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and chase chase Duke Ramon down. Have Miguel go out there and hopefully show him what's what. Are we going to win? It's going to be really close. Oh my god. Back and forth. <gasps> no! Defeated by Duke Ramon. Well, that's that's pretty humiliating, Miguel. Do better next time, I guess. It's the biggest the biggest cost there wasn't really the troops. It was just the the lack of raid cuz if you defeat the raiders, you get to steal their the the raid that they've accumulated and boy, we could really use that money. Oswaldo's health is poor simply cuz he's possessed. I don't know, man. Oswaldo, you, you should you should have better health than that. Like, just because you're crazy doesn't mean that everything is, is that bad. Become a king, Oswaldo. Become a king. I guess once we pick up another martial trait here, maybe we'll take trained cavalry. Then we'll switch over to stewardship and start doing some wealth because we just need cash. We just need cash, cash, cash. Well, you know what? There's a war going on over here, and we haven't sent anybody out to help Cortez, and, and they have helped us a lot. And importantly, if we uh, siege some of that stuff down, it's possible we can get some people to ransom. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and see what we can do to help them out. Purely, purely out of the goodness of our own heart, for sure. Oh, somebody's offering to buy a truce with us, Guadalajara specifically, but they're giving us 105 gold. That means that we're really, really close to being able to, to buy our king title, which is good because uh, poor, poor Oswaldo is not going to last forever. Oh, yes, we captured the high chieftain here. That means we can ransom him for 100 gold. I'm going to try to do that before nah, the AI ended the war before we could ransom him. Bummer. But now our troops get to go back home and we're at 170 gold, so we're almost there. Oh, well, an act of tyranny, you say? I don't have any issues with acts of tyranny in the uh, the service of the realm. Now with 202 gold on in hand, let's go ahead and proclaim the Kingdom of Jalisco. All right, so that's the first part of Los Estados Desunidos. We're going to see how far Oswaldo, our, our possessed character, can make it. His health is poor, but... You know, once once we uh, have the ability to switch over to medicine focus, become a gym junkie, I think that would be a good way for Oswaldo to live out the last of his life, and I think it'll probably afford us enough time to do some more conquest, because we got just a gazillion prestige. It should not be particularly difficult, either militarily, for us to beat some of these guys. Zacatecas is in a very weak position, for instance, and a struggle clash will let us devour their kingdom. But yeah, that'll be in the uh, the second part for 
Oswaldo of Jalisco now here on We Play Games. That's Walker. Take care.